Hi everyone, my name is May Park. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I'm so excited to be doing guest video on Alan Hudson's YouTube channel to fit in for Julie. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create this watercolor card with a floral stamped background. These are a few watercolor cards that I create for the last few months. When I don't have any ideas for my card design, I love to go through my old cards and take some layout and colors from them. That's exactly what I did for today's project. I'm gonna be using two stamp sets from Concord and Nines and one stamp set from Essentials by Ellen. I'm starting out by cutting down my Archie's Gold Pressed Watercolor Paper into A2 card size using Timur's Paper Trimmer. This trimmer is one of my favorite paper crafting tools. It cuts paper like butter. So here I'm using my mini misty stamping tool today because I want to stamp several images at once to save my time. Mini Misty comes with two magnets to hold the paper in place. However, I love to use washi tape to secure my paper instead. I'm pulling out the circle stamp from the bokeh dust stamp set from Essentials by Ellen. Then I'm gonna stamp it with versifying onyx black ink. I'm stamping the circle again on a post-it note to make a mask later. I'll be adding the sentiment from the Love You mini stamp set by Concord and Nines. I love how this sentiment fits perfectly inside the circle. They look like the stamps designed to be used together. I'm gonna pull out my stamps from the Wild Flower stamp set and Love You mini stamp set by Concord and Nines. I'm using a plastic tray to store my stamps temporarily. That way, I can find my stamps quickly and I can also prevent from losing them during crafting on my messy desk. Especially, it's perfect when I play with small size stamps. I'm cutting out the circle with scissors to create a mask and I'll be masking off the sentiment. I'm positioning the stamps on my watercolor paper. Mini Misty stamping tool is so useful when it comes to creating a stamped background with many stamps. It helps me stamp the images in a perfect placement. If you don't have this tool, you could use a regular acrylic block or stamp press. Misty just helps me to stamp quicker and easier. Once I place all of the stamps on my paper, I'm inking up with Versafine Onyx Black ink. I'm not gonna show you whole stamping process. Just be aware that I'm stamping two or three times for each image to make sure I get intense black outlines. Since I'm using a pigment ink, it takes time until the ink is completely dry. So I'm using my heat tool to let the ink dry quickly. Otherwise, I might make a mess with my inky fingers. I'm stamping my images one more time on post-it notes and cutting them out with scissors. I'm gonna mask off my stamped images using the removable adhesive. Masking technique is a great way to add some dimension to your images, especially when you make a one layer card. When you do lots of masking for your card, it's always good to plan out your placement first so you know where you want your images to be positioned. After I stamp the large images, I'm gonna fill in the gap with the small images. By the way, I'm using an absorber towel to clean my stamps. This is a reusable cleaning cloth and it's great for wiping your stamps for perfect clean. This ink pad is perfect for water coloring to color stamped images. If you don't have a waterproof ink, you can heat emboss your images using clear or white embossing powder after stamping with balsamic ink or black pigment ink. If you want subtle images, you could heat emboss your images with white embossing powder. However, I love stamping with black ink to make the colors pop once I watercolor. Now it's time for watercoloring. Here I have my Gradake Gansai Tambi 36 watercolor set and watercolor palette, round paintbrush size 4, and clean water ready on my desk. I'm wetting my paper with clean water first before watercoloring. Once I pick up some pigment from watercolor set with my wet paint brush, I'm gonna apply light color first for the base layer. Then I'll be bringing more colors to my images. Since I don't plan to create a realistic look of my flowers, I'm not gonna color my images in detail. So I'm leaving the white spaces here and there. 
I'm gonna use my heat tool to let the paint dry in between. Now I'm gonna turn on some music and speed up the painting process so you can watch me color. My paper got warped from water coloring, so I'm gonna run the paper through my colorbook die cut machine to flatten using a rectangle stitched frame die from Rompon. If you are not in a hurry to complete your card, you can place your watercolor panel under some heavy books overnight to make it flat. Here I have some white cardstock measured at 4 and a quarter inch by 11 inch. And I'll be scoring at 5.5 inch using Marshall Stewart mini scoring board and foam folder to make an A2 size top folding card. Then I'm gonna mount my watercolor panel on the card base using double sided tape. To finish off my card, I'll be adding some clear drum nits from Pretty Pink Posh on the card front. Since I have all of my supplies out on my desk, I decided to create another card with the same design. For the second card, I used Peerless watercolors to color my images. I used more bright colors and added some ink splatters. Which one do you like better? That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed my video and got some inspiration to create your own watercolor card. This was May Park for Alan Hudson Hello Monday and I'm so happy that I got the chance to share this video with you. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I try to answer all your questions. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye!